Look, let's return to our, our top story this hour. And the Bank of England have this morning warned the public of a material risk to the UK's financial stability. That's ahead of Parliament's return today. The Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, set to face questions from both his own party and opposing MPs regarding his current economic policy. Now, the Chancellor recently announced that his debt-cutting plan and how working out how it all is financed will be published on the 31st of October, despite promising our very own economics and business editor Liam Halligan that the plan would only be published on November the 23rd. You are going to bring forward the fiscal assessment uh, in conjunction with the Office of Budget Responsibility. Said you said that. in your speech yesterday that will happen shortly. Is shortly before the 23rd? So shortly is the 23rd. I mean, uh, people reading the runes and parsing... So it work. is going to be the 23rd of November. The, 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 you're, the, you're not bringing that fiscal it's, it's, plan it's be, it, It's going to be the 23rd of November. Okay. Well, let's speak to our economics and business editor, Liam Halligan, who's on the money. Absolutely adamant that that wasn't shifting, and here we are with it being a Halloween explanation. Indeed, there's a sense that the government uh, is being buffeted around, not just by its own backbench MPs, but also by events, not least on, on financial markets. Quite a worrying spike in borrowing costs last night on what we call the 10-year gilt market. That's just economics language for the place where the government borrows money for 10 years, where the government borrows so it can pay its bills, not least benefits and other public services and so on. And investors across the world, pension funds, insurance companies, they're demanding higher interest rates to borrow from our government because they are worried about the state of the public finances. Mm -hmm. And that's why this morning the Bank of England has said publicly that it's going to, going to intervene some more, itself buying some of those bonds uh, that other investors are trying to buy in order to make them look more attractive, in order to try and rein in borrowing costs for government. Borrowing costs, Isabel, which, of course, ripple across the rest of the economy for all of us. How concerned should we be, I mean, particularly when it comes to our pensions mm. with all of this? Because that's, that's what sets the, the heart beating a bit faster, doesn't it? You think, are our pensions really under threat now? Well, to be, to be clear, anyone who's already receiving their pension, state pension or workplace pension, that, that's, com that's completely safe. This is about the value of pension assets that are invested for people who have got private pensions that they haven't yet you know, retired, they haven't yet annuitized, as, as we call it, when you exchange mm. your pension pot for the, the, the regular income f for life. I would say the bigger concern, well, there is some pension issue here. There are particularly some pension funds which have taken on lots of debt in order to try and increase their returns, and now they've got to find cash mm. by selling gilts. <laughs> it's complicated, mm. but uh, trust me on this. Um, they're the ones that are getting into a little bit of trouble, but I don't think that poses an impact to anybody's immediate pension, particularly not if you're already in receipt of, of pension. So we've got to be careful as a... As a as a jour journalistic community of not, not spreading alarm. But what, where there is concern, Stephen, rightly, is that people who are on fixed mortgages who are about to expire, then they're going to have to clearly remortgage at a much higher rate. You know, if you took your mortgage out at 3 3 3.5%, and now you're going to have to remortgage at 55 6 6.5%, 6 that's hundreds of pounds extra every month that you've got to find to service that mortgage. Yeah. And that's where there is concern. And that's why you, this is now so electorally potent, because all these uh, palpitations in financial markets, it sounds really arcane, it sounds really otherworldly, but if you have got a mortgage or a personal loan that will be refinanced soon, it is going to hurt. Yeah, not least in the context of the cost of living crisis and, and, the, and the rate of inflation, everything costing more. I just want to ask you about this IFS report that's come out today, Institute for Fiscal uh, Studies, incredibly respected think tank. They've come out and said that these uh, tax cuts that were proposed in, in the mini budget would require big and painful cuts um, in terms of public spending which at the moment the government are claiming is not on the horizon, it's not going to happen, but the, the IFS seem to think that it's impossible to just do it through sustainable um, growth. Yeah, so what the I... Very re respected, as you rightly say, Isabel, what the IFS are saying is that in order to calm down the financial markets and make the numbers look a, a bit less unsavoury, frankly, the government... One way the government could um, uh, address this is to cut spending, and, of course... All the headline writers are light on that 
particular scenario. There are other ways they could do it. They could reverse their tax cuts or even increase taxes. What I would say, though, is this. I've got a lot of respect for the IFS. I know all the senior people at the IFS, as you'd imagine, being a card-carrying nerd. But what the IFS is very, very good at is looking at the specific mechanics of how much a particular move in taxing or spending mm. will uh, will the impact that will have on the public finances. What they're not very good at is bigger macroeconomic forecasting, mm. seeing the whole moving picture. Liz Truss and her acolytes would say, look, they're not considering the fact that we're trying to get extra growth. If we get extra growth, that changes the whole picture, and it really does. Mm. The numbers are completely upended and made to look a lot better if we can just get a quarter percent, a half a percent more growth in our economy. The other thing I would say, I mean, this IFS study has just come out. I've just been eyeballing it on the train. It does, it does assume ongoing very high gas prices and a very big cost of that energy price cap, which we've all talked about a lot. If the gas price continues to come down, the wholesale gas price on the European market, it's down about 50% over the last month. If that continues, that energy price cap, delivering that energy for firms and households at a certain guaranteed unit cost, it, that's a lot cheaper for the government to deliver because it doesn't have to pay the difference between the guaranteed mm -hmm. unit cost and what the actual market price is. So, look, it's that there is a lot of e the uncertainty. That's all I can say. There is a lot of, of concern that the public finances could come awry, but there are also very good arguments on the other side that it could actually be OK. This uncertainty is being reflected particularly in interest rates, and that is, of course, rightly causing worrying headlines about mortgages. But none of this is nailed on. Mm. It could easily reverse and be OK just as, e just as quickly as this panic has emerged. You know, it, it's... I wish I could say I knew yeah. what was going to happen, Stephen and Isabel, but but I just don't, and that's the most honest answer I yeah. can give. And, and financial yeah. well. forecasting, notoriously difficult to do. Um, but thank you so much for distilling and explaining all of that. Really appreciate it, Liam.